Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm standing here with John. He is the uh, main guy at Barco and with Mad VR. He's going to talk to you a little bit about achieving that great HDR experience. Thank you very much. Happy to chat with you guys. We are showing um, a pathway to getting the real HDR experience in a home, not what happens on TVs, but what happens in a Dolby Cinema. So if you've seen a movie in a modern you know, version like No Time to Die or Shang-Chi or Black Widow at a Dolby Cinema, and IMAX also does HDR rendering, you're seeing what they wanted you to see. That's the art created by the people who make the movies. There is a way to make that happen in your home with premium projection, and we're showing you that today at the uh, Cedia Tech Summit here in Dallas with uh, uh, Barco Bragi Cinemascope Projector. It's a 5K uh, 235 to 1 native projector, scope projector, and uh, Mad VR is doing the video processing to make the rendering of HDR automatic. So no matter what the content was mastered at, it will always look perfect. You can get that perfect image with the Barco by itself, but you've got to hit the right button because things are mastered at different mastering levels, 1,000 nits, 4,000 nits, 10,000 nits. And if you've got the wrong match, a movie's dark or it's washed out and clipped, the complaints you hear from consumers all the time. Right. There is no disadvantage with projectors and HDR. In fact, the reference HDR image is a Dolby Cinema, and we're doing that in here today. So we're coming into a booth where we've got a couple of things going on. I've got a, uh, the Barco Bragi 5K projector, and it is pointed at a Stewart Studio Tech 130 G4, and the screen is 5 feet high by 12 feet wide. We're doing 32 foot Lamberts on that screen. That happens to be the Dolby Cinema standard for theaters. They, the, it's 108 nits, which translates almost exactly to 32 foot Lamberts. So we're seeing the rendering the light levels, the color gamut of Dolby Cinema. And this awful scene that you're pointed at right now in this terrible moment in the life of the Gladiator <laughs> is um, not a spectacular demo scene, but it looks like it looked in theaters t over 20 years ago. This was one of the first movies that used computers to generate these special effects, CGI. And coming out of this misery that he's experienced, experiencing, he's gonna go into a dream scene and the dynamic range of something that was not shot in 4K. There were no digital cameras when this was made. It was film. Then they did digitally the special effects, which you're about to see. And rendering it at HDR, getting this content on discs, 4K Ultra HD discs, means we can see images in our homes that are literally better than what was seen in theaters 20 years ago on film. And you can go further back, all the movies that have been converted to uh, our digital content. But look at, the, look at the contrast in that dream sequence beginning, the rendering of that. It's just psycho good. Yeah, the experience, it is the movie. And this was shot on 35 millimeter film. What was the digital, it wasn't even a 2K inter, digital intermediate. And they were using computers in that era to create these amazing scenes. So now this is a script going from the, the strato. It's going to play this through and then it'll go on to the next thing. But what we're doing, and you could take a peek even, even at this laptop where I've got buttons here for the different mastering levels that you find in Ultra HD content. And without the Mad VR, um, I would have to pick the right button, the right profile, so that this th uh, content mastered a thousand nits would look perfect. And it will be perfect, no different than we see with the Mad VR in the chain. But if I put Blade Runner 2049 in, that is going to be washed out and clipped. I have a different profile to make that 10,000 nit movie look perfect. So basically they fall into buckets, low, medium, and high. And an integrator can automate that with a button that the user has access to. And you just tell your customer, when all your friends come over and they're, you know, your wealthy friends that might build their own theater, and you play your theater for them, and you hit the button and you make Blade Runner look like a terrible thing all washed out and clipped, I am not going to get a new job from your friends. <laughs> so um, hit the right button, sir, and then everything will be fine. And he might. Or you put in a mad VR <laughs> and you make it automatic. He cannot, he doesn't have to hit a button. It does everything automatically. It renders, it looks at the actual luminance values of each pixel. That's why it's a 4U high computer 
crammed with componentry and the fastest NVIDIA graphics card to allow it to do that. So it measures the pixel structure, it looks at the luminance values, and it puts that content where it belongs on the HDR gamma curve, if you want to call it that. There's a new name, EOTF. But as long as you know where the maximum light level pixel is, and you place that just under clip for your display, and then it follows the shape of the HDR gamma curve, perfection. You're doing what they do in cinema. And again, I said it before we, uh, we hit record, but oh, Dolby Vision is not a thing that happens in theaters. Dolby right. Cinemas use a, a file, a DCP they call it, and every frame has been created, edited, and locked down by the editor, the colorist, the cinematographer, and the director. Frame by frame, it's perfection. HDR10 is like that, and that's what projectors use. People say projectors have a disadvantage because they they don't do dynamic metadata, you know, Dolby Vision or HDR10+. Not true. What they do is what cinema does. You you set it up right, and you're seeing exactly what they wanted you to see when they created the movie, frame by frame, no variables, the dynamic range of this. Um, if if I can transition to the technology that makes it equal to a Dolby Cinema or an IMAX HDR rendering, it's the DLP technology which which is exclusive to cinema now. It's the only technology that's passed the standards that cinema require. And uh, it is what Dolby Cinemas use, what IMAX uses. Uh, Barco DFX laser theaters in the Galaxy Cinemas right. all use that. And they get that P3 color, that wide color gamut that we have on our Ultra HD content. And the dynamic range of the HDR curve uh, if the content was rendered that way. And it's, it's, it's a unique experience. And you've got to go to a commercial cinema to see it or you've got to have a setup or. like this in your home <laughs> to duplicate it. And today we're duplicating yeah. cinema. We're not trying to emulate it. We're duplicating it. I've got a Nord pointed at me right now. I that know. is Look a 13,000 lumen hot dog. Oh and God. if it comes up with a bright scene, we're going to have to go to the hospital. You're not supposed to stand in front of a lens and, and look in it like that. Um, so what we're doing is just bringing that HDR content to the home cinema for the first time. And when people see it, they've not seen anything like it. And you know, you guys build theaters and have been for years. We have had three revolutions in home theater to date. The first one started it before the 2000s when we had big pictures for the first time. Magazines like Audio Video Interiors focused just on these premium rooms, beautiful photography in this magazine. It was expensive. You were spending six figures to do a home theater back in the 90s. It was with CRTs and you could get, we used to do 100 inch diagonal screens. Oh, how big is that? 60 by 80. And that was a big, fairly big screen in the day. Yeah. This is 12 feet wide with one of our little projectors. Yeah. Um, the next revolution was widescreen. When Runco and Stewart Film Screen brought the Cinemascope format to home for the first time. That was 2003. Uh, Runco had a thing called CineWide. That was their mechanism using anamorphic lenses to, to do the scope format. And uh, Stewart had CineCurve and Vistascope, the, the, the scope format screen. Right. That was a revolution. We sold so many theaters based on the scope format from 03 to say 2010. Th then things got cheap. We had a little bit of a recession. Then the pandemic and we all died and it this stuff doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> But today, I think the HDR rendering of the image, along with immersive audio, I think it's a bigger advancement. Than is the biggest revolution. I call yeah. it the third home cinema revolution. Yeah. And that was part of my, my talk uh, in the seminar for the Tech Summit this morning. It is a revolution. And I say at the end, you got to show it. Showing it is selling it. <laughs> and so yeah. it makes the home theater showroom important again. It's, it's significant enough that you can have the old wine and cheese events and get customers to come out and see something like they've never seen before. And that's what it's all about. This is entertainment at its pinnacle for the home environment. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for breaking all that down for us. It truly is My pleasure. a spectacle once you step into this demo area with Barco and Mad VR. If you guys would like to purchase anything you see on our channel or would like to inquire about Barco or Mad VR, feel free to give us a call. We have free consultation and free design service. We would love the opportunity to earn your business. I think it's going to wrap it up for today. This is Callum with Dream Media Home Theater. Thanks for watching.